guest. My next guest is an author. What's an author, Craig? It's like a blogger who went to college. An author. <laughs> uh, she wrote a book called How Did You Get This Number, which is now in paperback. Please welcome the lovely Sloan Crossley, everybody. Sloan Crossley. <laughs> tense between me and Tony Shalhoub, but I think it's all right. I, I hope our conversation is as enjoyable to me as it is to you. It was a little I know. I was like, okay. Well, I think maybe you, you asked him about finance. People get a little wonky People get, about finance. Oh, really? Because I asked yeah. him. I didn't mean it, you know? I mean, <laughs> anyway, never mind. Look, uh, look, I, um... I, when I saw the, the, you were here promoting the hardback edition of this book, and there was a picture of, of a bear on the cover, and there's no bear here. That's true. And, and, but it's there's, very but tiny. there's toilet <laughs> paper on the cover. Well, that that hints, uh, if a bear, if a bear, you know. Oh, if a bear uh, does something in the woods, that's what you're going to need. Then. It's like a Charmin commercial. Oh right, I. I but see. just the the tail so end of it. It's pretty much the same book, but uh, without the bear and with a soft cover. And flexible. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, there exactly, you go. and it feels like toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to come out of TV. That's what I use toilet paper for. Exactly. Please, please don't use my book for that. Though. No, that no, be... no, no, <laughs> it's, uh, no. It, 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 it's quite rough. It's like prison toilet paper. Right. Right. Do you have that frame of reference? Have you ever been to prison? I was asking you if you don't. Yeah. No, I've been, I, I went to jail a little bit once, though. You went to jail a little not bit? Not really. Just a little bit of jail. Well, how much jail did you get? Like a week, two weeks? Well, three I, and a half years? I, I, you know, it was high school and I, you know, got caught drinking on a golf course or something like that and they... Drinking you know, on a golf course the, is an offense? <laughs> in this country it is, yeah. And they, and well, if you're underage and they took ah. me to, uh, they took me to jail with a bunch of people in the back of a cop car. Were you scared straight? No. <laughs> May I ask? I, I, I don't. I don't wish to be rude and pointy, but you've got a giant band-aid on your leg. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> what on earth have you been doing? Um, I, I. Outdoors a lot. I have. Been. What's funny is I have been traveling uh, quite a bit, and this is not from that. This is from being terribly rude and texting while walking, seeing something shocking, and just biting it on a curb. You fell over. I felt like you don't fall as an adult. You know what I mean? Where you're really, you skin your knee and everyone comes around and did they... You, did you start crying? No, but these very... Everyone's so nice about it and all you want to do is have them turn away and you just sort of want to sit there and bleed. <laughs> there was bleeding? Oh my... I'm not gonna... No. This is a, this is a family program. I won't show It's not play. a family program. <laughs> yeah, if, you're, if you're the Adams family, it's a family program. Family no, I, bled, I really bled, but it's, I haven't had something happen that was so, you know, normally when you get sick as an adult, you, you have the flu or something like that, right, it takes right. over your whole body, but I, I went into, uh, you know, the local pharmacy, and I forgot that you can talk totally normally when you're bruised, and I went to the pharmacist, and I said, I'm, I hate to bother you, but I seem to be bleeding profusely from my <laughs> leg, and she sort of looked over the counter and <laughs> screamed, and... Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> when they scream, that's a sign that it's serious, so yeah. Well, they don't see that much. The worst thing they see is people like haggling for toilet paper discounts. Yeah. So you said you've been traveling. Where have you been? Um, I went to, let's see, I, uh, I just got back from Ecuador. Oh, Ecuador? Yeah. Jeff, you've got a place in Ecuador, haven't you? Okay. <coughs> oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually used to live in Edinburgh. Where did you live? Oh, really? Yeah. Do you live in Edinburgh in Scotland? Yeah. Were you there in 1985? I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? No. <laughs> 95? 95, yeah, of course. I forgot I was a grandpa. Where is, uh, where's, your, uh, where's your place in Ecuador then, Jeff? Yeah, it's, uh, it's in uh, the, hot, the hotter part. The, the hot part. Is that where you were in Ecuador? I was part? actually in the colder part. Oh, we went across yeah, paths. Yeah. I actually went, um, I went as sort of a last minute trip and I asked a bunch of friends what I should do. And, you know, some came back with, you know, go to this museum, don't go down this dark alley, that kind of thing. Wow, and what helpful friends you have. Yeah. Friends. My don't go down dark alleys. Remember to write that down. How will I ever 
never remember that. Yeah. Um, and then one of the suggestions was that I climb a mountain called Cotopaxi. And so I thought, great, I'll do that. Cotopaxi is what you should put on your knee as well. And you... I, I, I had to use uh, crampons <laughs> to climb the mountain. So it's all, crampons, it's all in theme. All right. Um, but yeah, I, uh, and I did that. And I didn't realize, I've never even been skiing. And I didn't know that it's like mountain a two-day trip. Yeah, and it's very high. One of the higher uh, active volcanoes in the Volcano. on the continent. It's about nineteen thousand. Did you smell lava? No, I smell fear mostly. Honestly, I, I've, I been, up Mount, my I've own been up fear. Mount Etna and I smelled lava. <laughs> yeah, I, have. Oh, 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 I, don't, I don't know her. <laughs> no, Mount Etna is in Sicily. I went on. It's an active volcano. It's uh, like uh, Kokopiki, the one that you know. <laughs> It was just, it was just but I got altitude sickness. And oh, why were you? I I well you mean when I puked? <laughs> Around No in Edinburgh in ninety five. <laughs> how high were you? You mean when I puked? Yeah. <laughs> like, um about fifteen thousand feet. Wow, that's very or high. Nine pints in, depending on the answer to your question. Oh, nine pints? Edinburgh, the puke. Did, what did you drink <laughs> pints of? Pints of hard liquor or we had, pints in of, Edinburgh? Yeah. We drank a lot of Carlsberg. Carlsberg, yeah, yeah. That, that's the uh, Danish uh, well, I, lager. I don't know drinking. how it got there. I mean, oh, I know how it got there. <laughs> you walk up to the bar and you ask for it. That's how it got there. <laughs> I guess so. You ever been to Denmark? Um, no, I've you, never been to you Denmark. You want to get there? What, because of the Danish? No, because of Kierkegaard. <laughs> I never would have seen that coming. Isn't there a, st isn't there, isn't there a statue of a little boy? Like the Mont Peace. Yes, boy in, in, in Copenhagen. In Copenhagen. Yeah. Is that how you say it, Hagen? I say it that way, but I'm Because of the ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's like when people say Chile. You know, it's, it's yeah, Chile. It's or when newsreaders uh, say, now in Nicaragua. Nicaragua. <laughs> I know. Like, why are you talking like that? I like to say Nicaragua. You can only do it in, but in reverse. It works perfectly well. I feel like if I have friends who are fluent, you know, Spanish speakers, right. and but you would never know that, or they were native Spanish speakers, and then they say a word in English, and they can snap back, and it's charming. You know what I mean? Yeah, if like, it's like Nicaragua, like, like that. Da, 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 da. Coca Cola. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, no, we used to watch. In Scotland, know. when I was a kid, they used to have the Gaelic TV channels, and we used to watch the news when we were high, because. <laughs> Because they they would go in the Gaelic, and then every now and again there'd be English would go and a Bill Clinton. Cigar. You know, I was like, we have that with with my experience growing up was Telemundo, the same thing. Telemundo, yeah. Yeah, it's the same, but we didn't have the Gaelic channel. We had local access, which you couldn't understand either. But that has nothing to do with a language barrier. This is kind of like a local access show, don't you? I, <laughs> It's all one big town. Yeah. America. It is. <laughs> wow, that's great. Is that in the book? No, that's you, not you, in the you book. Want, you want to put that in there's the book? There's some Amer... There's, there's, yeah, there's, well, there's some American travel in addition to foreign... You should write about... Uh, Parisian going, uh, travel. Uh, you know what? The, you're, this is a nice photograph, but you're far more beautiful in the photograph on your, your book. That, <laughs> listen, I talk to a lot of authors. It's usually the other way around. It's Trust usually me, the yeah. The, the, it's, it's, um, thank you. That's very nice, but I, um, you know, I think that it's And you're it's much recent. bigger than that. I mean, you're tiny here. What, what are you like? That's a very small... <laughs> I, I've gained a lot of weight. My head's about this yeah, yeah. big compared you. to I mean, you're, that. You're like I also inches. look like... You also, you can't really see, but it cuts off where my arm is going. I think a lot of author photos get cropped in funny ways. Where is your arm going? I don't know. No one knows. But I Think so, back. I, <laughs> Again, family programming. All right, yeah, no, I don't really. Well, we're out of time. Awkward pause or uh, mouth organ? Um, awkward pause, I think. <laughs> it's like having Tony Shalhoub back on. <laughs> <laughs> Care to up the ante to the most difficult awkward pause of all? What would that be? Just more of this? Smell my finger awkward pause? <laughs> <laughs> what does that entail? <laughs> Whose finger? <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know. My parents are out there somewhere. My, yeah, but what does that mean? I mean, it's just... Do let's let's just smell my finger awkward pause. This is it. Oh, like <laughs> it can just be that. Okay. But it can also be this. Or if I was like... And then I wouldn't let you smell my finger, that'd be awesome. That'd be really yeah. awesome. It's all mine. It's yeah, yeah, mine. no, don't smell it. it. Mm, my precious. <laughs> anyway, we're out of time. It's lovely to see it you. Was you should come back soon. Come back when the. Uh, you don't have to write another book. You, you just keep on coming in different formats. Yeah, you, well, maybe the CD. You're doing a CD? No. Are you doing an audio book? I did. I read my own audio book for well, this. Well, then come back with the audio book next week. <gasps> oh, good. Well, I won't have to be here. I can just put a cassette player, like a really old one, <laughs> and play the play the audio book. Yeah, no? we, we could do that too, all right, I guess. If you really don't want to be here, that's... Swan <laughs> Crossley, everybody, we'll be right back. is an author. Now, an author, if you don't know, it's kind of like a blogger, but some went to college. <laughs> uh, she's a very, very clever author. She wrote this book, which is called uh, How Did You Get This Number? Which is a story about a bear that starts using a telephone <laughs> to menace people. He, like, he would call them up and go, <laughs> I haven't read it yet. But the author is very, very talented, very beautiful. Please welcome Sloane Crosley, everybody. Sloane Crosley. Sloane, welcome. Hello. I'm so sorry about uh, last week uh, when William Shatner was here and you were going to be on and then I'm sorry but that happened. There are worse people to get bumped for than William Shatner. William Shatner, yeah. I, he's, could, I won't name them. He's, a, he's an American legend. Well, he's uh, a I, Canadian one Canadian? as well. Canadian? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, college, what else are you going to correct me on? Hey, may I say that you look better than any other author who has ever been here ever in the history of authors? <laughs> I'm just saying. You should interview more actresses turned authors. Because Were you an actress? No, but I what imagine they're very, very easy on the eyes, and I, you don't have to read No, them but more. this is proper writing. You don't know that. It could be. I wrote that. I read the first one. Ah, uh, see? Okay. I did. I did actually write. Well, actually, I wrote it on a laptop, so it's not really proper, proper writing. No, I could, no you, you know. don't have to write with a quill pen to be a real writer. Well, I told someone the other day that I had a lot of writing to do and that I, I you know, couldn't uh, be out too late because I had a lot of writing to do, and I did this symbol. Right. And my friend sort of looked at me and she's like, you're going to go home and give someone a very bad massage. That's what you're going to do. Doesn't look that bad to me. Give it a go. Let's say it. Yeah, I'm all right with it. I can't feel good. No. It's a star. Well, it's not the worst thing in the world, yeah. Well, no. so this is about a woman that gets attacked by a bear on the phone. It is. It's about bear attacks in the southern plains. That's not true. No, I know. But I knew it wasn't true, but the audience were like, oh. Wow. I did go to college. Yeah, I know, so I know. But, uh, that listen, means a lot about the Southern People that plane. went to college still can write stories about bear attacks. That's true. There is a bear attack story in this. It's about... No. Well, but the attack is not on the bear's part. Uh, I saw Someone bear. attacks a bear? Yes. That's ambitious. I saw... <laughs> Not if you have a car. Oh. I know. Now it's gotten sad. No, so they run a bear Yeah, over. it happened. I'm actually ruining the ending to one of the essays as we speak. As I speak. Uh, none of these people are going to read. They're so. not going to read it either. Knock <laughs> yeah, it off. It's, Knock about, it off. It's, about, it's, about, it's a sad thing that's turned funny and light the way bear death can, can bear, be. Bear... <laughs> well, bear death is never funny, Sloan, but... But I think sometimes we can learn something. You know, this is interesting. I, this is the first time in the history of authors that the author looks better than their photograph in the book. I, well. A friend of mine took that photo. She's going to be really mad. No, no. <laughs> when I say that... <laughs> well, look, you can't please everybody. I'm sorry about that. It was just... Uh, it's not the... Hey, so the bear hey! dies? Well, I look better than the bear. There's no, no the, the bear... Yeah. Actually, I like... That's a grizzly bear. Did you know that? That... 
that can't be true. Is that true? <laughs> Well, I, I got no I anything. Responsible to the, to the it's possibly true. Actually, the woman who took this photograph um, also, uh, it's a real bear. You know, it's not oh. a man in a bear suit. <laughs> a lot of people think it's a, it's a, a man, man in a bear suit. Why would you? <laughs> hey, hey, we're not going there. He's so ex unnaturally expressive. What, th this? I think so. You can't really tell, probably. It's probably too small on camera, but he's got a lot of, uh, he's oh. got a lot of life in him before yeah, it that, that, Now, that's a bear that has some, a kind of sardonic quality. I think so. He's kind of like a... As do the, as do the, as is. Yes, I know no. your writing has a sardonic <laughs> So, we finally return to no, that. No, we can, we can depart. Uh, <laughs> now, you, but you write a little bit, you, uh, uh, in the first book, you wrote a little bit about New York City, because you, you live did. in New York City. I do. I live in New York, and it was very much a sort of, uh, dark comedy coming of age uh, in your 20s in New York and this one takes that sort of uh, pessimism and uh, you know general adds melancholy bears. adds bears takes it on the road there's also yeah. clowns in this book clowns but none of them die clowns clowns are the clowns evil <laughs> There's, they're, they're mimes, or I thought they were mimes when I first met them, and then they started speaking. Talking, yeah, 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 that's, that's the giveaway. Yeah. Poorly trained mimes. Yeah, right? yeah. But no, um... Where did you meet clowns in New York? Well, I didn't. I actually went to Lisbon to meet I've the clowns. I've been to Lisbon. I didn't see any clowns. Really? Yeah. Well, you must have been going to the wrong place. I clearly I was think... in the wrong place. Yeah. I went, I spun a globe and decided uh, I was going to go wherever my finger hit, uh, so long as it didn't deplete my whole life savings going there. Right. And um, I landed in Lisbon in the I middle like of you winter. I like I did it. Yeah, no, that's I good. I like that. Well, actually, I'm lying to you a little bit, though. The I, first... I like that, too. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> up to I'm it's like, really? Go buy some little... more. It's, it's, it's a good, it's a sort of conversational oil, the, the lying. But um, no, I, uh, I, the first time. <laughs> Isn't that the greatest thing you ever had? That is the greatest thing I ever heard. I wasn't lying, honey. It's conversational oil. It is. <laughs> And you need, it's, you it's need that if you're things. giving a bad massage. You <laughs> That's true, because you have to dip your fingers. Dip your fingers in the oil and then... In lieu of the ink that you would use yeah. if you were actually writing, not exactly. on a laptop. All right, tell me what you were doing. I somehow... Oh, yes, I uh, spun the globe, and this is what I was like. I didn't point to Lisbon at first. At first, I spun it with much drama and pointed to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And I thought, no one's watching. No. <laughs> I did it again and uh, landed in Lisbon, and I was a pretty lonely, odd, dark time. Then the last night I was there, I met a troop of clowns who befriended me and made me drink. <laughs> Are you sure this hasn't happened to you? Are you positive? Wait a minute. Does this does this sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> Drinking with clowns in Lisbon, which is important for me because I have a I had a huge uh, fear of clowns, as as everyone does. Aren't you afraid of clowns? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> because of what I, happened. No, I I learned their ways. <laughs> Anyway, long story short, they, they befriended me and I uh, convinced them that I was not uh, an alcoholic through a series of picture drawings. Because I don't speak Portuguese, so we right. have to actually speak in drawings. Right. <laughs> you know when you draw... Yeah, I know. I, mean, I, know how to, I know how to speak in drawings. I just, you know, it's an unusual like choice with kind of clowns sort of. speaking in drawings in a bar well, in Portugal. I, they spoke a little bit of... I just, you know, I don't speak any... Um, Did you try using horns or a car, you know, like maybe uh, concertinas I or... I tried. They think they thought I was making fun of them, weirdly. I don't know They're why they clowns. would think that. They're very sensitive. Yeah, no, clowns are, are sensitive. You know Tears of a clown? Never heard of that. Sad yeah. Send in the clowns. Send in the clowns. Which that was uh, Celine Dion, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See, uh, William Shatner. The Canadians. Yeah, the yeah, Canadians yeah, yeah. Just it's keep a Canadian on coming song. up. Yeah. I know, they are. We're out of time, coming. which I hate. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I know, and no, I hate that. I know, I'm apologizing, but I'm sorry. No, no, you. <laughs> are you? You sure you're not Canadian? You just apologized oh. for something that wasn't your fault. <laughs> that was conversational oil. Nah, you can say it. Lubricant. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to come back here before you write the next book. Okay. Because I, I, I give me a week to read it, and then come back and we'll talk about it. Oh, it'd be like a book club. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be oh, awesome. Sure.
crazy. I'll be like Oprah, except poor. <laughs> And I'll fly to Chicago. You fly to Chicago, and, and I'll be like, and they'll be like, ah. <laughs> when the paperback comes out, will it have a bear on it too? I don't know. I hope so. Or maybe a different to. animal. Your animal of choice. We can put on the cover. Let's put a clown on it. Okay, done. <laughs> Sold. Yeah, that'd be nice. Sold. All right, Sloane, you have to come back. Give me, uh, give me about ooh, how many pages? Um, two hundred and ninety something. Yeah, two hundred ninety seven. All right, I'm gonna need, uh, I'm gonna need a month. Okay. Uh, I didn't go to college. That's. So, I, I so barely was like, conscious during it. It's fine. The clown. Yeah. Poured me but a large. I can write it out for you in pictures if you'd like. Pitch. You do a picture version of this for me. Yeah. If you ask nicely, yeah. Uh, I'm asking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Sold. Sloan Crossley, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> My next guest is a beautiful, best-selling author. Her latest work is an e-book. <laughs> So I, I don't have one because this is CBS, but it's an e-book. I can't borrow the CBS computer. It's not my turn. Anyway, it's an e-book. It's called Up the Down Volcano. It's available online. Please welcome the lovely Sloan Crossley, everybody. Sloan Crossley. A bird poop magnet. You apparently. are. You got, you got the red dress on. Birds will go crazy for they that. They go. No, I've never actually been. May I before. say how lovely your hair is? You may. It's very. <laughs> Thank you. It's just lovely. I'm just looking at it. It catches. It. There's not a lot of light in here, but it's catching it. There's really. I'm like blinded. I, there's a lot of light. I think. Really? I'm getting old. I. I Although I, it's not. It's not. It's. I think it's you. But you have people backstage that that make. This possible. I make it sound like I'm in that. You know that Shelley Long movie, Dead Again? Um, it yeah. It was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Basically, she, you know, gets. Some, she, they, she dies, and then her husband's a plastic surgeon who, like, spray paints. Oh, her. yeah, 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 yeah. Her, and so that's that's what the kind of miracles that your staff is working backstage. <laughs> it's actually illegal what they're doing. <laughs> Are you. Uh, do you believe in life after death? Um, no, well, I don't really believe that. So what am I supposed to believe now that would make me believe that later? <laughs> I'm trying to be as specifically obtuse. I don't believe in life after death. Well, that's okay. This but that's a very, that's a very, uh, that's a loaded question. Is it? Yes. You make it sound sexy. <laughs> Do you believe in life after death? <laughs> And by life after death, I mean, you mean the French promiscuity. Way. In the French way, le, le petit mort. Yeah, yeah. Oh, le petit mort. That's yes. very different. That's very. That's that's. that the literal translation of le petit mort is, of course, the small death. Right. But what Which it means is, of course, is, the French attitude towards sex. Right. It means orgasm. It means orgasm. In America. I'm European. I knew that. They get. They gave us that and the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Those well, were their gifts. Well, and, and uh, no, fries are from Belgium, aren't they? Yes. Belgium is everything bad for you. Fries, chocolate, waffles. Black tar heroin. Black tar heroin. <laughs> they sell that out of a food truck now. Yeah, you, the back you can of get them from vending machines. Yeah. Black tar heroin, yeah. That's right. It gets it's like stuck Chocolate, a bit. black tar heroin. <laughs> it's so different. I like dark chocolate and black tar heroin. <laughs> what should I do? Have I mean, you ever been to Belgium? I have, uh, I have been to Belgium. Um, Belgium I, was a was a brief sort of fleeting two day trip for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I was stunning away. I lived, and I don't know if this is a, a sore point or an amazing point for you, but I lived in Scotland for about a year. Oh, that's I love Scotland. It's my home I, I and I saw your your series that you did. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually I know where the revolver <laughs> bar. <laughs> See, I, I, I don't, I, I know this, you're, this is hard to believe, I don't know where the revolver bar is. But have you been to the it's revolver bar? Me. I haven't been, but I know it's, it's in an area that is, uh, do you know, it's called the Pink Triangle? That's the area. It's in. I can imagine what part of town it is. Yeah. 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 But it's, uh, yeah, and so uh, I lived in Edinburgh, though, which is sort of, I found it much more international and, and didn't feel quite as Scottish to me. 
as, as Glasgow, I really didn't understand anything anyone was saying. Yeah, so uh, Glas the Glasgow accent can be very difficult to understand. I sometimes go home and I'm like, I didn't get a word. I can't yeah. understand. And people generally do that with their own handwriting. I can't read my own handwriting. I should have been a doctor. Do you do your uh, writing uh, written down? Like, do you handwrite your books? Uh, no, I now I, I write stuff to myself in the middle of the night that, that makes no sense on the Blackberry. You write books on First the Blackberry? I have a Blackberry. Let's, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of saying I have a, I have a sort of quill and ink. <laughs> the situation. Let I guess, me just I guess, get out my Blackberry, Mr. Screw. <laughs> they sell it with that, actually. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so, um, what's an ebook then? What's the difference what's, between an ebook and a regular book? Well, when, when a regular book and a computer love each other very, very much. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Uh, but the, it is only available as an ebook. Um, it's a little bit shorter. It's a one giant long essay that it's actually a piece of a story I told her last time, so I won't repeat myself. But it's about climbing up a volcano and falling. Oh, I remember that story. Yes. And yeah. you actually, I had a band aid on my knee, and, and you implied that maybe my injury wasn't so bad. And there's still a scar there. Let me see. Okay. And now I'm just looking at your whole leg. <laughs> I, I used I used your injury for my own perverse enjoyment. I was like, wow, that, that band-aid turned into a little pity more for me. <laughs> She's just got it's just bleeding. Yeah, it's like Carrie. Um, but anyway. Well, no, it's not like Carrie. <laughs> no, no. No, you, no, no, no. You, know, you okay. can't do that. No, that's bad. But um, yeah, so so it's basically a shorter version of uh, Do you a think when you're writing no, this is this is for an ebook, so I'm gonna write differently than I'm gonna write for a paper ebook? No, you sort of take the brakes off a little bit because you can write as long as you want. Instead, I sort of thought of it as a longer magazine piece. So a magazine piece, you have certain restraints. Uh, Magazine's sort of like a papery blog from the olden days, isn't it? Yeah, they, 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 they melt horses like the one you have backstage, and they use wax, and they cover the... Is that, that? How they, is that how they make magazines shiny? They yes, that's why the magazines horses? make no money anymore, because they're using all the horses. <laughs> I, I have no idea that magazines sure. were melting down horses. <laughs> is that true? It's a one, Any specific magazine? One at a time. <laughs> All of the How one... many horses to make a magazine? <laughs> like working there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, meow. <laughs> meow. Could we have a saucer of milk for Sloan, please? That's, I would not. I would take. I'm a cat person. I would. I would take. Are you a cat person? I. I no, but that do you mean? Time. Do you have a cat, or do you dress up as a, a cat? cat costume? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I dress up like a cat. That is very important since we're talking about the mascot that you have in the back. No, I am a cat person. It took me a while to actually admit. I. I go both ways. <laughs> Much as they do with the revolver in, in Glasgow. <laughs> uh, you're, uh, you're certainly welcome here, young lady. But um, I do. I grew up with all sorts of animals, and I have a cat. And I think the most the most popular thing I ever wrote by far was an op-ed piece for the New York Times about how I was sick of sort of a, being sort of an apologist, a feline apologist. That I it's not my fault. My cat's so cute. I really like her. Well, there are many women who feel the same way. I know, and they're crazy. It's but a, you mustn't be ashamed. There is I'm nothing not. wrong. This is national television. National television, and you're out here <laughs> saying how much you love your cat. <laughs> your <I> choice, <laughs> Owen, your choice. She's, um, she's got a lot. She's a, you're going to tell me about it. your cat, now you? <laughs> you're going to tell me a story about your cat? <laughs> oh, she's so cute. She knows where the door handle is. Is that where we're going? <laughs> If I had pictures, it would be really Oh, funny. that would be great. I yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. On your Blackberry. Look, my cat. <laughs> you can sort of see that's a tail. That's a tooth. There you go. That's <laughs> Listen, we're out of time. What do you, what do you fancy? Uh, open pose, mouth organ, uh, big cash prize, or something else? How, whoa. How much is in the big cash prize? 50 bucks. For, in quarters. And what do you have to do? <laughs> The question is, it's because if it's What are you prepared to? No, no, no. <laughs> very, very, the, as with magazines, the most minimal amount possible. <laughs> well, you, could, uh, you can answer a question. Okay. Or you can guess what's in my box. Okay. Or you can imagine what Her Majesty the Queen is thinking. Okay. Those all seem like they're worth about $25. Can I take half of it? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
the, the questions can be pretty tough. Okay, I will take the cash prize, please. What time is it, Shadows David? <laughs> All right. Okay. Question box, Her Majesty the Queen. Her Majesty the Queen. All right, okay. We have imagined a scenario in which Her Majesty oh the gosh. Queen has been <laughs> falsely imprisoned. Okay. It's her jubilee year. She is mm. upset. She is distraught. Yes. And you have to ask yourself, what is Her Majesty the Queen thinking? Why... Did I not work out like Pippa when I had the chance? <laughs> that is exactly oh. what I think! <laughs> 50 American dollars across the right back. is an author. What's an author, Craig? It's like a, a bloggy person without a computer. <laughs> she, uh, she wrote this book. It's a bestseller called uh, I Was Told There'd Be Cake and uh, How Did You Get This Number? That's not the name. Oh, maybe that's something she said to me. <laughs> Please welcome Sloan Crossley, everybody. Sloan Crossley. You look nice. I like that dress. Thank you. You lead with such a, a flattering foot. Well, I, I'm a creepy, pervy guy. <laughs> oh, well, well, I'm European. We Thank won you. the Nobel Peace Prize this year, you know. <laughs> all of you. <laughs> all of us. We all get to share in it. We all get it for a day. It's like Powerball. <laughs> People, ch you know, they chip into Powerball oh. and like it's like an office pool. Except did it's you all win? Europe. Did you win? No, I'm not European, nor did I enter the Powerball contest. <laughs> I've won nothing. <laughs> no, you've won the right to call yourself an author. That's true. I was wondering where the other book was, and then it was pointed out to me, in fact, that Jeff has the other copy of your book. Do you yeah. enjoy it? <laughs> you what? <laughs> it should be, um... She, can you read that? Shouldn't it be on an e-reader? For... How dare you. Okay. <laughs> We go back. He's yeah. so attitude. Oh, so much attitude. I, I can't tell you. There are certain <laughs> times during the lunar cycle where he just goes oh, crazy. It's, it's oil. What are you talking about? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> so how have you been? What have you been up to? Writing books, I take it, huh? Writing books, taking names. Do you take people's names and then no. use them in books later on? That's illegal. <laughs> It's, I don't think it's illegal, but I do. I always change them to something that uh, is, is somewhat related to how I think of the original person. Did you ever, uh, anyone come up to you and say, wait, that's me in that book, that jerk, the, that's me, isn't no, it? No, it's the reverse, actually. Well, yes, th yes, that. I see, so what you said was, mm, what you said is wrong, Craig. Actually, when I think about it, it was right, but I'm more comfortable saying you're wrong, I'm more so I. Uh... Accusing you of things you right. didn't do. It's right. my space of, of comfort. Um, no, but it, what's more interesting to me, at least, is when people will read about themselves. I don't write too much, I write more about myself, but they'll read about themselves and um, think, who was that? That's insane. I'm yeah, like, oh what kind gosh. of crazy creep? That's like, you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I don't know wait, how to Wait, wait, wait. It's, you know, we can... I'm not in any of those books. It's the copy Jeff has. Really? Yeah. No. It's the copy that's hand-inscribed. You, you can only read it if you're a robot. <laughs> Kiss my ass. <laughs> man! Jeff, you're meant to be supportive of the guests. This is not good. No, I was I'm talking just... to you, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. How have you been otherwise? Like have you been on your travels? Have you been off and around? I've been off and around. Um, I've been, um, honestly, I'm still like kind of like enamored that, that Kristen Stewart was here. It's kind of exciting. I, that was I, I too creepy? I had to apologize. I no, was, I don't I, think so. I, I'm actually, I like the Twilight movies. They're good. I do. I have seen it. They're, 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 they're good. I, I, uh, Good. Well, yeah. I, I, well, I was never. I was. Um, I grew up on like Anne Rice, and so they're totally different. I mean, that. I mean, they kind of make Anne Rice look like Dickens, but they're 
you know, they're good. <laughs> are you trying to undo all the Crikey. I've been putting together here? <laughs> It's I've been working you know. hard like the Twihards are just I'm thinking about, about the putting their pitchforks down and leaving me alone. <laughs> I, this is the thing, is I'm trying to distract you. I'm trying to take the heat off of you via Jeff and myself. They can they can come after me. No, no, you don't you don't you don't want the the the, the kids that love the vampire movies after you. You don't. Trust me. You don't want that. They'll make your life a living hell. I can't tell you how many times my studio has been TP'd. The TP. Yeah. <laughs> I think vampires need toilet paper, though. I don't know. No, vampires. <laughs> no, they, I think they poop. <laughs> do you, the lesser-known the lesser children's book, do vampires poop? Uh, everybody poops, <laughs> including vampires. That was the secret. Little asterisk. No, they, um... Well, this is a question I've always wondered. Do zombies poop? Because they eat human brains, so clearly they, they poop. They, um, this is, I mean, this is getting really medical. I don't know if I know the answer. Oh, you do? Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> this is getting medical. I know the answer about the zombie digestive system. They excre it's excreted out the pores like a snake. Sna snakes don't poop? I have no idea about that either. Oh, you made it up? <laughs> Oh, you saw, saw just because you saw the snake, yeah. you think you're great because you've got glasses. <laughs> you think you're smarter than me because you've got glasses. I wear glasses too sometimes. That's not why. It's because of the heels. Because you, oh, the heels. <laughs> Let me see. Very good heels. Yeah. No, it's all working. Wherever's they're going big, on. Here, yeah. Well, they're big. I have huge, giant feet. I was supposed to be like a, a supermodel, and something went horribly. Like you know, puppies have big paws. And then they become supermodels. <laughs> A kind of a dog, sure, but yeah, no, they become like a giant. What the? What are you doing? <laughs> they become they become larger dogs, and I never be grew. Have you got very big feet? Stick one of them up here. Let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> they're not that big. <laughs> they're not. They're not. Do you uh, do you water ski at all? <laughs> it's a joke. I, they horse. don't. They, they're they're not big. <laughs> they're not that big. It's one of those things people think get, in their, get ideas in their head about things in their body. For example, I think I'm a creepy grey-haired older man. That's, That's not, not true. true at all. <laughs> exactly, it would but be great if you just only well, that would be good if all the if all of the you know American or, or female uh, you know nervousness and, and feeling bad about your body was focused on like obscure extremities like your earlobes, like you only gain weight in your earlobes, or you only like everyone was always just feeling bad. <laughs> Like, it's none of this. It's, this is fine. And then it was all like, oh, I have that, like, fat pinky I have to work out. <laughs> That'd be good. Right? And that's what everyone was so stressed about. Working out. There, there would be no more women's magazines, though. That would be but, you know, maybe stress is stress, no matter what it was. So if society said you have to have thin pinkies, then right. everyone would be like, oh, I've got to go to the gym. Right. Like, yeah. Everyone would be drug addicts. Right. Everyone would be, like, <laughs> working their pinky. I know. Sorry. That's true. <laughs> Are you doing a dirty joke about working your pinky? No. No. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Oh, it was in my head. Sorry. I, I, I was doing it well. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't pure. It was, a, it was a drug addict joke about people and what they do with their pinkies. What? Isn't that like an 80s, like an 80s, like, you know, like a thing where you do drugs off your pinky? Am I the first one to say that? <laughs> No, no, I thought you meant pinky. Yeah. <laughs> We're out of time. Uh, do you want a coconut? Uh, I, you don't have to have it now because it's a laxative, I've found out. Oh, well, that's good news. Wait, what do you, I, what do, you do with the coconut? Uh, you can take it home and uh, draw a face on it or something if you want. You Shoot. can send you... them in the U.S. mail. <laughs> Those glasses are real, aren't they? <laughs> you could... You You're could, like, you'd send a coconut. You can just put a stamp on it. Well, you can? Really? Yeah, if you'd like, I can send you back the coconut. You know, why don't we send the coconut around the world like in that movie, Amelie? Okay. <laughs> and we'll get the coconut, we'll draw a face on it. Or like the Expedia it. gnome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like the thing that isn't advertising. <laughs> uh. I don't work for them. All right, let's draw a face on the coconut. All right. Little eyes here. There you go. Eyes. Aww. Yeah. And then we'll give it lipstick. Okay. Mm hmm. There's, this is happening on TV right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Craig, don't you have one you prepared earlier? No. <laughs> 
You are, you're the prop specialist as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, there might be a strike because I'm doing this, actually. There you are. Coconut. So. Take that coconut with you. And then send us a picture. Of, you going back to New York? Okay. Okay, yeah, send yeah. it, and then we'll start posting the coconut around. It'll be like a thing. Like weird places. Yeah, all right. Okay. Sloan Crossley, everybody. Do it <laughs>
person. And such well, I was actually I'm always surprised by that. Um, Chuck Palahniuk, who wrote Fight Club. Yes, he's been here. Yeah, lovely. Just the nicest, nicest, nicest man. And you're but I have that. What's going on? I have the theory that people who write, like David Benioff, who writes uh, Game right. of Thrones, yes. and have you read his book City of Thieves? Yeah, I read that. Oh, and when the nines roll over, oh he has a great wow, he writes so dark, and he's such a it's sort of friendly and seemingly I don't know him that well, but he has a kind of positive. I think that it works in opposites. Like comedians who are very funny are usually dark, twisted, awful, desperate yeah. people. <laughs> desperate. But they're like, ah, ah, ah. watch the birdie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pay no attention. Trying, you trying. can't see my pain. <laughs> uh, yeah. And yeah. people and and are incapable of of working in that. And but people who write really dark stuff are usually like Stephen King was here. What a lovely, friendly, well-adjusted human being. I'm a little worried though that this is leading towards my stuff is not that dark. I know. <laughs> so, so I suspect that you have. I am just. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah, I think you would probably have a, a great uh, darkness. I feel like this should be a, a. We could join this into a therapy couch. Well, we could do it by <laughs> therapy yeah, as well. Together. Certainly. Are you in therapy? You live in New York. You should be. Yeah. New York. <laughs> aren't, aren't you in therapy? Do you, well, you know, I actually do have a therapist. Yeah, me too. I do, and I like her. I like her a fair bit, but she talks more than I do. <laughs> You shouldn't do that. Yeah. No, I love it actually. Really? Right. Well, I mean, I'm well, a that's such show. a writer's thing, you know. I mean, like right. go to go. Oh, and just let her talk, and then you can take her and, and then make her a character. And then every time I just I'll take her and make her a character. Yeah, just steal her she did life. Start asking. So between this this collection of essays, I'm working on a novel, and I finally started talking about the characters in the novel because it always bothers me when people talk about their characters. It seems very self-important and self-serious if they talk about them like they're real. Um, well, they are real, though, aren't they? To you, sort of, kind of? To me, sort of, kind of, but at the same time, I know when to sort of keep it in the house and not, you know, go down the street and be like, mm. oh, Bob, there's no character named Bob, but Bob did the funniest thing the other day. And you're like, well, that's not a real person. Yeah, but did, <laughs> but did you ever write I a character? I can kill him tomorrow. I, well, yeah, but see, that's the interesting thing about being a writer. I, uh, I noticed, I was writing a story once about a woman in France and I realized about uh, <laughs> a couple of days in that I, th I started to think, and I'd spent a lot of time alone, that um, <laughs> I started to think she was on to me and she knew that I was writing about her. Oh, wait, okay, so this is a real person you No, were no, no. This is a fictional person that I. Mm. <laughs> Maybe she was writing about you the entire time. Oh, come on! <laughs> It's quite possible. But you don't you get emotionally attached to characters? Of course you do. Of course you do. Yeah. I mean, well, that's when you start figuring out, I think, when you think, you hear this, that people will start, you know, they'll start speaking to you. I'm like, that hasn't quite happened. But that happens in the negative, where you're like, well, that person would never say that in a million years. Right. OK. It happens sort of a negative. Well, what about the, the novel, I think, intrigues me. What are you, what are you writing about in the novel? Because that's the one that, that's, you know, that's punk rock right there. That's going to take over. You well, know? it's the kind of thing. But my brain or the world? Yeah, no, you know, maybe not the world, but certainly your brain. Certainly my brain. Yeah. No, it definitely takes over. It's it's actually, it's a it's a very different experience because you have to make up this. I always compare fiction to. I, I don't have this frame of reference, so I have no right for the following comparison. Doesn't matter. Fine, it's all reference. A fiction to me is like having a child. Right. Where everything about that is your fault. Everything, all the yes. DNA, yeah. the nature, the nurture, the spitting up. It is your fault. Um, whereas if you adopt a child, yes, part of that's not your fault. <laughs> and I feel like nonfiction, you're basing... Can, can you hold yeah. just a second? I'm, I'm, I'm with you, but just hold okay. just a second. That's fine. The views expressed by Sloan Crossley are in no way <laughs> uh, mine. Unless you agree with her, in which case they are. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. okay. Because you're, you're, you're bouncing off the world. You write nonfiction. You know, some of the stuff is just a fact of the world we live in. If I write an essay about your, your snake mug. Yeah, but even if you write a piece of nonfiction about the snake mug, you, you still have a subjectivity about it. So it becomes, in some way, a, a perspective. And therefore, to me, it may be fictional. Like, what you think about my snake mug, right. you know, for example, this is not a pipe. You know what I'm saying, right? I'm agreed. Right, yeah, right, right. So, saying. you know, wh how you see it, how I see it, you know, your fact is my fiction. My, you know, come on, man. I'm trying, I'm trying to recuse myself of any responsibility, and you're not letting me. I'm not letting you. I'm not I letting you like because like you're a wrong. very, very, very intelligent human being <laughs> and a terrific writer. If you were just some celebrity tramp whore in a book, I would let you away with it, but you're not. <laughs> I'm 
so I'm so happy that you, the ing came after. Oh. <laughs> I really I thought I heard celebrity tramp or. <laughs> or that, yeah. <laughs> I was really nervous. No, no, I'm very excited to read the novel. I'm excited. Well, I'm excited to do that, and then the novel will come out. You know, it'll, it'll be, come we have when some it comes. Time. You're you're catching catching me in sort of like promotional purgatory. That's Not, kind of think. that's where I live. <laughs> that's where you. Live. <laughs> have you ever have you ever seen Defending Your Life? I have. I love that movie. <laughs> Albert Brooks movie. movie. I love that With movie. The past yeah. lives. Does everyone? I wish everybody had seen it. Oh yeah. Well. I wouldn't yeah. encourage them to stop watching right now the show, but maybe once no, the show is no, over. Stop watching right now, now. And go and watch uh, Defending Your Life, because we're out of time. Oh, well, there you go. So maybe this is good timing. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Crossley, everybody. We're right